Hey friend, John McLennan here, and in this video you're going to learn how to play Lonely Stranger as recorded by Eric Clapton from the MTV Unplugged record. Now this song is an awesome blend of, of course, Clapton's blues roots with some real soulful and gospel sounding chord changes. I'm gonna break it down for you step by step. Now Clapton on a lot of this record actually used a nylon string guitar. So I broke out my nylon string for this song and he played it without a pick. So this is definitely more of a finger style guitar part, but you could play it with a pick. I'm gonna show you the chords and you can strum it as well. We're going to go through the whole thing, but before we do, if you're new to the channel, I want to hook you up with something right away. I put together this awesome fretboard guide that's going to show you the five chords and the five scale patterns that I use to map out the entire fretboard. And this is going to help you with your major scales, your minor scales, and your major and minor pentatonic scales as well, and show you how the scales connect together with the chords. And I put it all on one page. You you can grab it completely for free. Just go to johnmclennan.com slash fretboard guide, or you can use the first link down below as my gift to you. So hope you enjoy that. And with that said, let's break it down. All right, so the song opens up with just Clapton sort of freely playing in the key of E, you know, some blues licks. Kind of like how I started off the beginning of this video. And then once the tune starts, he goes into this beautiful progression. Check it out. All right, so let me break down these shapes. We're starting out on an E chord here, and that's just all six strings, open, two, two, one, open, open. Then we move up to what's like an A over C sharp here. But we're gonna keep this E ringing throughout. So we've got that low E underneath, but then I've got the fourth fret of the fifth string, and then second fret, second fret. So second fret there on the fourth string and second fret on the third string. So it's that chord there plus the low E is going to ring out. Now that's a very common move you hear in the blues like we hear that in so many songs but what Clapton does is he starts off with that and then he makes this change. And that's just really got a gospel feeling to me. He's basically playing from an A major now to an A minor sound. So this is gonna be starting on the third fret of the fifth string. You've got three, then four, then two. But you keep the E still in the bass. So it's like a it's like an A minor six over E. And then that resolves back to E. So you got Beautiful chords there. Now, finger picking wise, he's playing, you know, some slightly different patterns throughout, but a basic way to really capture the sound of it. You could play the low E, and then you could do a pinch of the fourth and third strings. And Clapton does this thing all over this record where he hammers into that E chord. Again, you hear that in tons of blues licks. And then you play the second string, then move up to the next chord. And that's going to be a pinch, just thumb, index, middle. Okay, so one and two and three and four and. Then play two more low E bass notes on beat four, four and. Then switch to that A minor shape and go one and two and. So that's low E string, pinch the chord, then play the second string, then go back to the E. Play the high E and then the low E. So the second measure would go one and two and three and four and. So all together the riff would go three, four, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and repeat and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. 
Okay, so that's our figure, and that's going to come back throughout the song. From there, we go into the verse section, and that's where Clapton sings, I must be invisible. Here's what it sounds like. Okay, so that's the first four bars. So we start out with the riff. We go E up to that A shape there. Then we go up, okay, and we play a C sharp minor seven. That's starting on the fourth fret, four, six, four, five, four, starting on the fifth string. Then we go to F sharp seven, which looks like the same shape, I'm just bringing it up one string, and then down to the second fret here, starting on the low E, I'm going two, four, two, three, two, two. Now all of these chords are syncopated, so the first one's on the B, and then you push the second one like this. One, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four. So we go. One, and two, Okay, then we bring this chord up two frets, but take off the middle finger. This gives us a G sharp minor seven. And then go back to F sharp seven. Okay, so E, A, C sharp minor, F sharp seven. G sharp minor, back to F sharp seven. Then we go. I love this here. You go to a B major chord. That's just a bar chord on the second fret there, two, four, four, four. And then take the index off, and you get a B with an A in the bass. So it's like. Okay, then we do the same thing again, but we have a slightly different ending. Here's the different ending. Genius here. So this really kind of taps into those Tears in Heaven chords and that same sort of sound where you have a slash chord. So you have a triad with a different bass note. So this is going to be a D with an F sharp in the bass and then an A but with the E in the bass. When you play it finger style, you get this great sound there. It sounds almost like a piano or something to me. So you do the same thing. E, A, C sharp minor 7, F sharp 7, and then D over F sharp, A over E, then back to the riff. Okay, so that's the verse. Here it is. The entire verse played as one piece. Three, four, and... Second half. Da, da, da. Da, 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 to that intro figure. So we're starting out on an E chord. And we'll keep that same rhythm where we have the first chord on the downbeat and then the next one pushed. One, two, and. So here we go, E up to F sharp seven. Then B, walk the bass down. And then here we took that D over F sharp, but we moved it up two frets and we get a E over G sharp. So that goes, it's a tricky move there. One and two and three and four and. 
Then we go A, then G sharp seven. It's like this. It's like doing this chord here, but Clapton just goes down here. He goes, it looks like a D shape. Just shift it up. One, two, one. Starting on the fourth string. So. Then C sharp minor seven. E seven. Then A. A sharp diminished seven. So that's just starting on the fifth string. One, two, open two. And then. E with a B in the bass, so that's just E from the fifth string down. C sharp minor seven. Then F sharp minor seven. That's starting on the low sixth string. Two, four, two, 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 two. And then B nine. That's starting on the fifth string. Two, one, two, two. Then back to the riff. So the whole chorus, again, goes like this. Three, four. So take your time with those guitar parts and rewind the video and go over any sections that are unclear. And for me, this is just a beautiful blend of bluesier elements and then a real kind of gospel soul sounding chord progression with all those slash chords, you know, the A over E and the D over F sharp. So keep working on it, and to help you put this together even more, be sure to grab my ultimate fretboard guide at the first link down below. And this is gonna show you the five chords and scales that you need to know to map out the entire fretboard. And when it comes to putting songs together or learning how to improvise on guitar, this is one of the most useful PDFs that I've ever put together. It's just one page. You can grab it completely for free. Just go to johnmcclennan.com slash fretboard guide. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Hope you have an amazing day and we'll see you in another video real soon.